Hey guys, it's me, Robin, R. Silent Crafts. Welcome back to another session of Sew With Me. This week I'm still sewing kitchen towels, but this time I'm making them so that they can hang from the oven door and not constantly fall to the ground. My youngest is 18 and all three of my kids are out of the house, but I'm still constantly picking the towel up off the floor. They just slide right off or they get bumped off when you hit them with your hip or sometimes the cat likes to play with them. So now we're going to learn how to make some towels so that they stay. Once again, this is going to be another great gift idea and with Christmas just around the corner, you can make up a few of these and give them out to friends and family and you'll be all set. It's a pretty inexpensive gift too. You can pick up towels at the Dollar Tree for, sometimes you can get a two pack for a dollar, but mostly just one dollar each. Or you can go to Walmart and they usually have like a three or four pack for about three or four dollars. And you should be able to get two towels out of one fat quarter of fabric. So if you have any scraps laying around, you're all set. You don't even have to use full pieces of fabric like this. You can piece your scraps together and go ahead and just make a patchwork one. I already went ahead this morning and made a couple of these just to see how it worked. I went online and I googled hanging kitchen towel pattern and there were several different designs for the topper here. So you can just go ahead and pick whichever one you want but I'll put a link down below to a few of them for you. You can have this pointed version or you can have a rounded version. They even have some that are shaped like an apron or a dress. But this is the design I went with because I kind of like the way it hung over and you can either put a button or a snap to hold this onto your stove. I'm going to go ahead and show you how to hand sew a snap on because not everyone has snap sets and not everyone wants to do buttonholes. Now if you already know how to use the buttonhole feature on your sewing machine or you want to go ahead and read your manual or watch a video on how to do it, you can make a buttonhole and add a button to these. But for today, I'm going to add snaps to mine. My Dollar Tree had several black towels and a few blue ones and brown ones. So once again, we're going to be working with a black towel. And to brighten it up a little, I chose these two fabrics. Just one with the fun little design and then some flowers. I could give these out individually or I can have it as a match set. We only keep one towel in the kitchen at a time because the only place for us to hang it is on our stove. But if you have a place in your refrigerator to hang it or maybe the handles on your drawers have a, the little handle that you can grab onto versus a knob, you can hang a couple of these in your kitchen and it'll be a matching set. Now this time I am going to go ahead and take the tag off. We're going to be cutting this towel in half and making two towels out of it so one side would get a towel and one wouldn't so I'm not even going to worry about it. I just fold my towel in half. You can be all fancy and measure it and everything or if you have a towel with stripes on it or certain patterns you can go exactly in half based on the design but for this one considering look at this this time they actually printed this one pretty evenly and the lines aren't all crooked good for them so I'm just gonna fold my towel in half did that sound count did that sound condescending I'm really sorry I mean they just did sometimes the machines get a little off balance so it was really great that they got that right I'm gonna take my scissors and just go into this fold and cut it. Sometimes we don't realize things we say sound a little bit snarkier than we expect. And now I have two towels. These parts that I cut off, if you notice we're going to have a little black snow everywhere so be careful where you choose to do this. I'm going to be putting these up inside the hanging towel portion so we won't have to worry about hemming this or anything. The portion we cut off is going to go up inside here. So we really won't have to worry about it unraveling and fraying or looking not so nice. Because since the way we cut it, all these sides here, we have three edges that are all hemmed. And they're all surged from the company, from the manufacturer. So we don't have to worry about hemming those. Now with these towels, what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to take, because obviously this towel is cut much larger than that we have to gather it up and put it up inside one of these pieces. So I, I did two examples here to see which way you would like. With this one, I know it's a little hard to see on black, but this one I just, just kind of folded over little sections and made little pleats all the way across. And that's how that one will hang. 
But this one... I just kind of took the towel and I tucked it in here like this and I folded it and stitched across so when this one hangs this one's this one's more ruffly and this one has more of a set pleat to it and now you can either choose this side or this side I kind of prefer this ruffly look because it seems more natural the way it's hanging Although, let me tell you, the other way with the big giant two pleats in it is much easier to sew through than this. While this isn't that difficult, the other one's just easier. But this one looks better to me. Now, here's the pattern piece for the top tab that we're going to be using. We're going to be cutting out two of these from our cotton fabric. And we're also going to cut out one for each towel out of batting. These two, I didn't use batting at all. My concern is, is when you put a snap on it and you're constantly pulling at it, that it could pull through the fabric. So you can either use stabilizer or you can just simply put a piece of batting in there and that'll help keep it nice and strong. So now we need to take our towel with our cut side and we're going to need to gather it so it fits into this six inch space here. Some people recommend taking it to your sewing machine and stitching a really long stitch on it and then pulling the thread and gathering it up but a lot of the times the threads tend to break. You can do it by hand, but then still you're taking all that extra time there too, and sometimes it just breaks and it can get very frustrating. So I'm just gonna kinda scrunch it up myself, throw some pins in it, and we'll call it even. I'm gonna leave my pattern piece here so I know how small to scrunch this up to. What I did with the one towel is I just made this side just a little bit short from even because we're going to be stitching along this is going to be your seam line right here so we still need to be within that seam line if we go all the way to here you'll be able to scrunch it in at the machine but it just to start with i'm going to try however it comes out it comes out right okay so i'm just going to take this and i'm just going to grab this towel and just fold it over and make a little pleat stick a pin all the way through you could measure each and every one of these if you would like. I didn't measure this one. I mean, you could tell I didn't measure it, but I don't think it looks bad. It just looks like a towel would be when it's scrunched up on the hanging bar. These have the squares, so I guess let's try. Let's try with this one, just bringing the squares over. We put one square on top of the other. Take this square put it on top of that one that might be a very simple solution for us without having to measure take this square and fold it on top of let's see take this square fold it on top of that one there we go That'll get us within our area, and we only have to have the three pleats. That'll look nice. Now, since we're making two towels, let's try that one more time. Take the third square over, fold it over to the first. Pop a pin in it. Three squares over. Fold it over and a pin. One more. If you think about these, these are going to be at waist level and below. It's not going to be at eye level. Your eye is not going to be drawn to it. So if you get your pleats a little bit off, I really don't think it's going to be that big of a deal in the grand scheme of things. Okay, then we'll take these over to the machine and we're just gonna sew one little line, probably a little bit, half inch or so down from the top, just to hold the pleat in place because we're going to be putting it in. See where they said the hemline here? We're gonna basically keeping it up here past that line because we're gonna fold this in a half an inch. I'll show you when we get there. 
because my toppers are purple, I went ahead and I put purple in both my top thread and my bobbin. It's not gonna matter, ow, stab myself. It's not gonna matter about the purple showing up on the black towel, so if it's a little bit crooked, you get a little off wonky, as long as you stay within about a half inch from the edge, you're gonna be tucking it up inside so it won't matter. I'm just gonna put a straight stitch on here, but if you want, you can use a zigzag or any other stitch. The goal is just to get these pleats, hold them together nicely, until we're ready to shove it up inside the topper. It's a very violent process. I'm just gonna go ahead and start probably in the middle here because the pleat is where I wanna catch it, so I don't have to worry about the end. I don't have to worry about back stitching or anything like that because once again, it's gonna be up inside so it won't matter. Just bring my pleats all over. Here we go. Now when I get to the pleats and everything, I'm gonna have to go a little slow and I might have to hold the towel a little and not pull it because remember, we don't wanna break our needle, but just kinda help glide it through a little because we are going through, what are we going through? We're going through four layers of towel here, so just go easy and gentle. It's not as hard as working on denim and jeans, but we just have a regular needle. We just wanna go easy. Try to remember to pull out your pins as you go because you don't wanna run over them. See, now that I have a little bit of the towel out here, I can just put gentle pressure on it to help glide it through the machine easily. And without breaking my thread, I'm going to go ahead and put up the next one right behind it. Now if you set all your towels up ahead of time, let's say you're going to be making 10 towels, if you want, get all the different steps done so when you come to your sewing machine, you can just chain stitch them one right after another and just keep on going. With some projects, it's just as easy to make 10 of something as it is to make one or two and you can save some time. Now that we stitched the pleats in place, let's go ahead and cut out our topper. I already went ahead and traced out two of the toppers on a thin batting, one for each towel. I wouldn't recommend truly directional fabric for this because what you're going to do is you're gonna be taking this piece and pulling it down. So if the back was directional, it would then be upside down here. So that's one thing to think about when you're looking at your fabric. Try not to get anything that's going to be too obvious that it could be upside down. This is all helter skelter for like the Roman numerals on a clock, so this one won't matter. You could also have the front and back piece a totally different color if you'd like. That way when this top piece comes down, it's contrasting. Maybe that's what we'll do with this. We will cut out two pieces of each fabric, but then we'll put one on each towel. You guys, you're so smart. You guys come up with such great ideas. Now, if you decide to use interfacing, you wanna go ahead, you can, you can choose to put the interfacing on now and then cut this out, or also cut out two pieces of interfacing per towel to the same size as this pattern that we're using. I just have just a regular pen because it's going to be our cut line anyway. Just trace around it and then we'll cut it out. Now to keep your pattern from shifting, you can go ahead and put a couple pins in. So it kind of keeps it steady while you're cutting it out. You could worry about straight of grain while you're cutting this fabric out so it doesn't stretch too much, but I'm too much of a rebel for that. And chances are I'm gonna be using scrap pieces like this, so I'm just gonna be able to put it on any way I can. And we're also not gonna be manipulating it that much that we need to worry about is stretching. Now you can pick these up with your hands and cut them out by hand, or you can take a rotary cutter and a ruler and you can just follow the lines along. Or some people, it's really crazy, but the people that make clothing, they just take their rotary cutter and a pattern and they just trace all around the pattern. Do we feel that brave? Nope, I'm not feeling that brave. I'll stick with my simple scissors. Now that we have our pieces cut out, 
and our batting cut out. We're going to go ahead and put them together. I have my cotton pieces are right sides together. And then I'm going to take a piece of batting and put it on top. And then pin a bit, a bit, a bit, a bit, a bit, and then pin them together. Once again, I'm going to go ahead and pin in the center. Hopefully, I will stay away from the edges so I won't have to remove the pins while sewing. Saves you a little time. You could pin all the way around if you felt needed, or you can use your little clover clips. But for me, the three pins are good. We're not making a fancy quilt. Everything doesn't have to be exactly perfect. We can always trim things up afterwards. Hopefully your mother and your grandmother and your sister aren't going to put all their towels together and say, Ooh, mine's not exactly the same as yours. They did it differently. We'll be fine. And if they do something like that, they don't get a homemade gift next year. Okay, so now we are going to take this over to the sewing machine. We're going to leave the bottom open because that's where our towel is going to go in. And we're going to stitch about a quarter of an inch all the way around, pivoting at each section. All right, sewing machine's over that way. Let's go. Now this one, remember, we are leaving our bottom open to put our towel in. So we're going to go from here all the way around to there. And we are going to back stitch at each section just because when we go to fold because when we go to fold these ends in, we don't want the seams to be coming undone. You can do a quarter inch. You can do, right now I'm just doing my needles in the normal position. And wherever my presser foot is, I'm just running it along the side. And that's the, uh, it's a little bit more than a quarter inch on my machine. I like to stitch with the batting on the top. That way the smoothness of the cotton fabric will glide against the, the feed dogs of the machine. Sometimes the feed dogs can get a little bit tangled up into this material, into the batting. So it's just easier this way. When you get to the corner, just pivot. And then we're just gonna do the same thing with the second one. Then we'll go over back over that way and we will iron it and I'll show you how to put it together. After I sew them, I just like to give them a good steam press. It's gonna set the seams. Get everything nice and flat again. You can iron it from the batting side. You can iron it from the cotton side. It doesn't really matter. Okay, before we turn these right side out, we're going to do a little bit of seam trimming. Right here, where you have your pivot points, I like to just trim it down to about an eighth of an inch. You don't want to get too close to your seam line so it falls apart, but you want to have a little less bulk. If you happen to have any extra batting that just kind of wiggled its way out, you can go ahead and trim that off also. When we have this inside point here, you want to go ahead and just take a little snip, get close to the seam, but not all the way. If you get distracted by the kids screaming or the cats clawing at you or hubby barking away and you accidentally slice into, snip into your seam, it's okay. Just take it back to the sewing machine and make a new seam and just go inside it a little bit. See here my, my batting just kind of like stretched out a little and went past there. Now I also like to cut back a little bit on the bulk on the tip. Just go a little bit of an angle from each side. If you were just using the stabilizer and you didn't have the batting, it probably wouldn't be as much of an issue having a bulky seam, but the batting does add a little bit extra to your seam. Now when I was sewing it from this side, I didn't quite, it, it came really, really close to the edge here, so I was a little concerned. So I just took and I made another line right there and stitched a new seam. No problem at all. No one will notice. This type of sewing is very, very forgiving. You still want to take your time and do the best you can, 
but sometimes things will move. I don't have a walking foot on my machine, so things tend to feed at a different speed between the top and the bottom. So some things can get pulled a little bit out of shape. But that's okay because I just, like I said, I just trim it up for this project. It's okay. Now I have my turning tools for turning this inside out or right side out. What we want to do is we have the batting and then the two cotton pieces. We want to go in between here because we want the two pretty sides to be facing out. I'm just kind of get this part out. Take something that's not too pointed that will go through and, you know, could poke a hole in your fabric. Or if you have a pair of hemostats, you can just stick them up inside there. Grab your piece and pull it out. Now when I take my, my fat plastic crochet hook, I just pop it up in there because I know how much force I can put to bring the point out. And this plastic hook is so large that it's not going to pop through there. Now I'm sure if I went really crazy and just started ramming it in there hard, I could have an issue. But I'm not going to do that. And then I just take these little shoulders, pop these shoulders out. If we hadn't have snipped right here, we'd have a higher chance of this section puckering. I like to take, this is the stuffing tool that came with um, a package of fiber fill, or you could take the, um, you can use a pencil that's not sharpened, or you can kind of use a pencil sharpener and take a dowel rod and just sharpen it a little, and then take some sandpaper or a emery board and file this down. But anything that's Got a little bit of a taper point to it. You could still do it with the crochet hook. But I like to just come up here, just make sure I can wiggle the stick. I spin the stick like this, and I kind of push down gently here, just to make sure that that points out. But the crochet hook, I like to rub it up against the seams, and that helps smooth out the seams. Sometimes, these are just nice and perfect in the first shot, and other times you have to just fiddle with them a little bit. Same thing with the other guy. And do that, grab him with the hemostat. My little pointer pointer. If you put your pointer up against the batting on the seam part, against the batting in the fabric, you have a better chance of not popping it through the seam. And just run my crochet hook along. Make sure you get these shoulders out. Okay. Then I'm going to go ahead and just give it a nice iron. Now while you're doing this, I have the steam on. So get it nice and flat. You want to think, which side do you want? Oh, look at that. I was going to make one this side and one this side, and I didn't. I tell you guys, every time I make a video with you, I get too far ahead thinking what I'm going to do next, and I forget what I wanted to do. It's okay. It's fine. I'm sure you guys are just laughing behind there saying, huh, Robin did it again. Okay, so decide which one you think is the nicer side, because... Your towel is going to be hanging here, and you're going to see this, and this is going to come down. With this towel, I could have decided I wanted more of this showing. I could have wanted, if I want the sombrero hat, I can bring this down and make this the front, because that's where my button's going to go. But it's just something to think about while we're doing this. You, there's only so much room in the head and if you just keep putting too much information in there you start forgetting other things I think subconsciously I'm thinking everything has to match you can't have things wonky but that's okay this is gonna be really cute like this we're gonna have this one and we're gonna have this one it'll make a nice match set 
not everyone's going to want to have something that looks like that. I like it, but I'm perfectly happy with this also. This will be just as fun. Okay, the next thing we're going to want to do is we're going to want to tuck these sides in and make a little bit of a hem so that we have a clean edge against our towel. You can measure it. You can measure down each side to make sure everything's perfectly even. I'm just going to go ahead and trim some of this batting up just to make this a nice straight line. Same thing on this one. See that batting showing a little bit? It's not going to really matter because that's being tucked in, but I feel like I can get a, a more even flip hem if I do this. Okay. So it doesn't matter where you put your fingers. You're going to have batting only on one side. So I just take the edge, fold it down about a half inch, fold down the other side about a half inch, and when you take it and you go like this, the sides will turn in. You can get your ruler and you can measure to make sure both sides are perfectly the same. Or you can just kind of eyeball it. Don't you love how I do everything so exact and perfect? Perfect has its place, don't get me wrong. I do perfect a lot. Just so far, there hasn't been too many things we need to be perfect with. And then I'm gonna go ahead and give a good, nice, hot steam to set that hem for me. Okay, let's try that again. Fold down about a half inch. Mm. See, let me see. You see how the first time I had it, this the batting, the seam, I just want to put the batting on the side that the batting goes on. It's just going to make it easier to fold it. So I go ahead and fold down my about a half inch and my about a half inch. Give it a little pop. This pattern, it, you can go all the way up to an inch folding it under if you would like. That's just going to guarantee you that the edges are going to be caught and you're not going to have any of the raw edges popping out. Whichever works for you, fold it up as much or as little as you're comfortable with. Check both sides to make sure they look about the same. You're going to be able to tell if the seams aren't right because you'll get a big wonky part sticking out here, so you'll be able to see it. Miracle Steam. Okay, now we're going to put the towel up in there. Just kind of fix your pleats a little so they're all folded up. Just not that it's going to get messed up in there. It's just going to be easier to put it in there. Okay, now we're going to slide this into there. We're going to go about up to here, a little less. It's really going to be too hard. You don't want to go up into the slanted part just because the towel will bunch in through there. Now if you have to, just kind of fold it up a little, pop it in, and then we can adjust. I like to take my side, pop that over where I want it. I take the corner of this towel here on my finger and I put it up there and I just grab it with my thumb then I take this section and so it can't go anywhere I'll just pop a pin in it then I can come over and do this side same thing my finger in there and hold so I know where that edge is pop it into the corner This part you're really going to need to use pins. I don't think it's going to be possible to use those clover binder clips. And then you just get your pleats all nice-ish. And pop one in the center. See? Simple.
simple. It's more of a fiddly process than it is a difficult one. Okay, now, one of the things is sometimes you can't get the other towel, it just, it, it was perforated and it just ripped right off. Because we cut the towel in half, you can't actually put this up inside because you have that raw edge in there. But you can go ahead and just trim it down. And then just put this part into the back. Just don't cut the stitches. Just be careful. This towel, there really isn't a front or back to me. So I'm just going to go ahead and just put this towel in anyway. And hopefully... Knowing me, I won't remember, and it'll be another mistake you see me make, but hopefully I'll remember to put that in there. A little trick, I don't have a black Sharpie with me right now, but if you take a Sharpie, you can always color it if it matches that, and then that won't be as noticeable. If it bothers you. If it doesn't bother you, don't worry about it. Just go ahead and put this at the back of the towel. Same process for this one. I really think once you get the sides in, the corner edges like this, it just makes the rest of it just lay into place nicely. Just kind of make it a little bit nice and put the one in the center. Okay, we're going to head back over that way to the sewing machine. I make it sound like this room is really huge, but it's not. It's just a little 10 by 10 room. But what we're going to do is down at this end, we want to have two rows of stitching down here to give a nice sturdiness to the towel. Because whether you have pets or you have little children or you yourself just happens to grab the towel a lot, if you start pulling on it a little hard, plus just going through the washer, you want to make sure it's sturdy enough that this seam is not going to come undone. So when we're all done, we're going to have two lines of stitching there. But we also want its top stitch about an eighth of an inch all the way around here. It's going to keep the layers together nicely. And top stitching is that little trick that makes it look more of a store-bought item, more of a handmade gift than a homemade gift. So what we're going to do is we're going to put our first stitch just a little bit higher here. And then we're going to take our next line of stitching and we're going to put it through here. And that one we're going to take all the way around and top stitch. We are going to be using the purple thread for this. This one it'll match nicely on. This one it'll be more of a contrast because it's a darker purple thread. We could switch out to a blue or something like that, but I just like to stay with the purple theme. Okay, back to the sewing machine. When I sew this, I like to keep the towel part on the right hand side of the machine, just so I can use the edge of the towel here as a guide on where to put my lines. If your machine does fancy fun stitches, like starburst, or you can do zigzags, or just a straight stitch, or anything you want, now's a good time that you can play with it. The decorative li the lines down here that are holding the towel in, you can make these decorative. You could put decorative all the way around for your top stitching, but this is such a small area, your thread is going to be really noticeable. So if you want to highlight your thread, then go ahead and put a fancy design all the way around the top stitching. If you just want to go ahead and put one simple, one simple little line around it and just top stitch it, it's fine too. But you can still put a nice fun decorative stitch down there. I am just going to go ahead with a basic simple stitch. Remember to take it a little slow because you're going through two pieces of cotton. You're going through the cotton batting and then you have this towel where it's pleated. It's, it's in four layers. So that's four, five, six, seven layers that you're going to be going through. So this is not the time to be a speed demon. Your machine should be able to handle it fine. Your basic everyday sewing machine. It's just if we get going too fast with all these layers, we could break a needle or we could get wobbly stitches and we don't want that. If you're concerned about making a straight line here, you can go ahead and take a mechanical pencil or one of your your air erase or your heat erase or water erase markers or a piece of chalk or even a little sliver of soap make yourself a nice straight line that you can follow when you're sewing. Now I'm just going to go ahead and do a top stitching all along the edge of this. Trim my threads. 
when I get back down here, I'm going to go ahead and put my top stitch right along there, and that'll give me my double enforcement. Now I made this line go far enough over that when I come back this way to top stitch, I will cross over that line and secure it. And then when I stitch here, I'm just going to split the difference between the line I already stitched and the edge. Then when I get back to the beginning, I'm going to back stitch to secure the thread so it doesn't come undone. nice nice I'm gonna go ahead and do the same with the other one and then we'll meet back over at the table and we'll put the snaps in when we're getting ready to finish this off we have many options to make some type of closure to put this over the handle of the stove or the drawer you could sew on some velcro you could make a buttonhole whether by hand or by machine or we can put in snaps today we're gonna to put in snaps even with snaps there are options there are the kind that you sew on. When you go to the store, these are normally on a cardboard paper and it's usually separated the front and the back from it, which is much easier than trying to get these apart. Or like this one, you can put a cam snap on it. These are just plastic snaps that became very popular with the people that are making handmade diapers and they're put on with a can snap, K-A-M. Or you can just pick up one of these snap tools at Walmart. I bought this several years ago and it was only $5, so I can't imagine it still has to be underneath $10. And then you just have to buy the snaps to go with it. It comes with the directions and you just set the snaps in, much like the cam where you set the snaps in here and you just push the pliers down. Now all those tools already come with directions such as also with the buttonhole where you can just find a video or check your manual for your machine. But today we're, we're going to pretend like no one has those options. You only want to make one or two towels, so you don't want to go ahead and buy a snap set. So we're going to do the kind that you just sew on by hand. And we're going to put a button on the outside to make it decorative. Because both of these pieces are sewn on the inside, there would be nothing on the outside and it would just be, it would just be like this being folded over with nothing at all. So we're gonna put a little added decoration. I'm just using regular sewing thread that I went ahead and put through my needle and I doubled it over. If you have button thread or a hand quilting thread or something stronger, that would work nice too. Mine is just a cotton thread, but a nylon would work well too. So what we're gonna do is this is the one that has the little tag piece left over when we took the tag out. So we're going to put that on the back. So I'm going to be bringing it over this way. So first off, after making the first example, I found that I think it's going to be easier to sew the button on first and then sew the piece on the back. Get you in nice and close so you can see. We're going to decide where we want to have our placement of our snap. Now I just make sure these sides are lined up. You don't want to have it off kilter. Well, if you want it off kilter, go for it. But it looks better if it's everything's all lined up here on the side. And remember, we're going to put our we're going to have to be sewing through this, and this I can feel right here. This is where my towel where we pushed it up in there. So I think I'm going to want the snap to be just past that part. So what I can do is I take my friction. You can really do almost any type of tool you want for marking right now. I would try to avoid a Sharpie just in case, but mostly you're going to be putting your snap or your button on top of it so you're not going to see it. But I'm just going to kind of hold it down. I'm going to say, ooh, I like it right about here. Lift it up. Just make a little mark. Just a little dot. Based on my little dot, I'm going to say I want my button to be, oh, right about there. Okay, so remember we're going to put our button on the outside, have my thread doubled with a simple little knot on the end, 
I want to keep, I don't want my stitching to go all the way through if I can avoid it. Because while we're going to put this little snap on top, it's kind of easier if you don't have to worry about covering up extra thread. So I just take a little bit of a bite where my mark is. You guys see okay? And pull it through. What I like to do is I like to just stick my needle back through this little loop and it'll give me a nice little knot there. My knot will come down to the center and everything's good. So now you can decide do you want to have the X or do you want your stitches to go around in a square? Mine are just going to be a simple X. This is just like sewing on a button anywhere else except we're not going all the way through. Just grab a little bit of the fabric there. This button is purely decorative. It shouldn't be getting any type of wear or tear, so you shouldn't have any problems. We're just putting a few stitches in. You could use embroidery floss if you'd like, and maybe just tie a little knot on top so that the threads hang out and be decorative that way. I'm just going to go ahead and stitch this on, and then we'll come back. Okay, button's all stitched on. I'm going to take this last time up, and I'm just going to go all the way through to the back. Now the piece that goes on the top is going to be the one with the little nubby. Just go ahead and grab that. Now this has four holes. Let's make sure it's just kind of, I can feel my button underneath with my fingers. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to stitch each section. I want to go down and grab, I'm going to try to grab the batting and the cotton fabric here. I'm using a nice light blue thread so it blends in and it's not quite as noticeable in the fabric itself, but it's a nice accent against the uh, snap. And after you get about three or four or five, just go ahead and put your needle through. And I like to come back out on the opposite side. You can work around in a circle. It's just the way I sew on buttons, so it's just the way I went ahead with this. When I put my needle through, I could have come up through the hole instead of having to take that extra little stitch here on the side. You can do that. And more power too if you can, because every time I try, I can't get my needle to come up through that little hole. Okay, now I'm just gonna go over to the next one. I'm going to stitch this one and this one, and then I'll be back. Okay, I've got all my stitches on. I'm just going to take one more little stitch through this hole. Don't pull it all the way through. Put my needle through the loop once and twice. Slowly snug it down, and that's going to put my knot and hold that securely. Then I just pop this through and I make sure I don't go through to the other side. I'm just through the batting and the fabric. Pull it through and that's called bearing the thread. A little bit of a tug. Snap, snap, snip that right off. Okay, let's make a knot for the other side. I'm going to cut that little tail off. I'll make sure you're still on the same side as this, the opposite side from your button. So we're going to go ahead and put the other part down. They call this part the male part because that's got the outie and the female because it's got the innie. We're going to go ahead and stitch her down here. We've already made our mark, but we're just going to make sure we're still on the opposite side of our button. And once again, we're not going to go all the way through to the back. It'll keep the thread on the front and hidden and it will look a little bit nicer. But if you have a hard time with this, just go ahead and sew all the way through. 
All right now this one I just have to make sure that this part where it has the outside of it is against the fabric because I need to be able to put my snap into there. Then I'm just going to go ahead and stitch this on the same way I did the other one. And I'll be right back. Alright, I got my guy all sewn on. I just have to bury my thread and this one will be done. And that's it. You're all done. Just snap it. Give it a little test. And you're good to go. There you go. Four simple towels made from two actual towels, a little bit of material, and some snappy supplies. These towels were actually pretty fun to make, and they're really quick and simple, so that's good for gift making. I think I like it better with the batting inside. It feels more sturdy than just a simple fabric. I I'm worried about snaps ripping out from the fabric. I do like the decorative look of buttons on it, but I think for ease, just to put the regular cam snaps in from the snap set tool. It's just so much quicker and so much easier than having to stitch things down. But if you don't have these tools, then this is a great way to go ahead and get your towels done and have them and decide if you want more to decide whether or not you want to buy a tool. So that's it for this week. Next week I think we're going to go ahead and try some Quilt As You Go table runners. That should be fun. Alright, we'll see you then. Bye!